Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about concurrent periodization uh, because it's a big topic again right now, and it's something a lot of people don't understand. It's something I've always been a fan of. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And people forget that, that I actually have periodically used concurrent periodization. In fact, it's what I used the last time before I went into my Bulgarian training, which lasted seven months. Uh, I did like a four-month block of concurrent periodization to rebuild some stuff, and then I went into doing heavy singles every single day. Uh, and it, it's what built my base, rebuilt my base again to be able to do that. So the whole thing with concurrent periodization, part of the problem we have is that it, it's been popularized again a bit by uh, Alpha Destiny, and the problem is that when I, I don't know everything he says about it because I don't really pay attention that much to him because I don't particularly like him. I don't think he's that smart. But that being said, people are trying to quote him, and I kind of see stuff spread around on forums and other stuff of their interpretation of what he's saying, and people are confusing certain aspects of the conjugate method uh, by Westside Barbell that he has bastardized into what concurrent periodization is. And it's stuff where people are saying, oh, it's about rotating exercises all the time. That, that's nothing to do with concurrent periodization. What concurrent periodization is, is rotating rep ranges and intensities all the time. Even if you did the same exercises, you're rotating your workloads through the week. Usually with concurrent periodization, we are doing multiple rep ranges or intensity levels or training elements inside the same week in a block. Instead of more of linear periodization where you change it on a week to week or every three week uh, basis, you know, into, into mesocycles cycles and everything. What we're doing is we're combining multiple elements together. Now for people like Westside, uh, that usually involves what? Two max effort days, which you're hitting extremely heavy peak sets, right? One rep, two rep, three rep, whatever. Usually for them, it's a one rep max, right? For two different days each week and then two different days where they're doing more volume. Usually that's dynamic effort work for them, but they also rotate it in with repetition method, as they call it. Um, so essentially you're dealing with week to week, inside the same week, training different aspects of things. And now people would say, well, well why does that matter? Well, for most people it doesn't matter. If you're a novice lifter, you, you have no business doing this. You have no business doing this. And you guys know what I define as a novice. My definition of a novice, if you guys are still struggling to get to a 225 bench and a 315 squat, this, this stuff's a waste of time. It's a waste of time for you. More advanced lifters, it has its place. But it's not for people who want to minimize training. And what I mean is the benefits of concurrent periodization exist for two groups of people. For in-season athletes, you need to be competition ready at all times. And this is not the only way to do it, by the way. Uh, and this can be even for field athletes. So as you see a lot of coaches, and, and I'll say the same thing, if you're an in-season football player, you concurrent periodization probably the way to go. Um, like linear periodization works great for the off-season, but then when you are in-season, concurrent training uh, has its merits because you're going to train multiple performance elements and sustain that performance at any given time. Now, for West Side guys, that means they stay meat-ready year-round. In other words, uh, the West Side barbell guys are ready to do a powerlifting meet every weekend of the year if they had to, in theory, right? So that's why one reason they use it. It's good for in-season athletes, and they want to be in-season year-round. The other group of people are people who want to absolutely maximize weekly training. In other words, concurrent periodization is not for people who are saying, hey, I want to get just enough training to get really good gains. It's not what concurrent periodization is for. It's for people who are saying, I want to do the highest possible workloads and training stimulus on a week-to-week -week basis that my body can handle. People say, well, why does this matter? Um, because in terms of things like overuse injuries and in terms of things like uh, maximum volume you can do on any given system over a month, you're going to find that, let's say you take a three-week block and you were to do any sort of workload uh, and, and compare it, what you will find is that splitting rep ranges and intensities into different days with concurrent style training allows you to do more work and recover from each style of training day to day, more so so that you can actually do more work on any given day. So what do I mean? Um, if you were to take your four max, two max effort days, if you were to do a max effort and say repetition effort system, right? 
which is, is very, very common. It's what I prefer to do, something in that, in that range. What ends up happening? If you were to try to do those uh, two of those max effort days, double them up each week, you're not going to be able to do as much workload on them. Like if you were to continue this for a month, what you're going to find is that the weights that you're hitting or the amount of, of peak sets you're going to be able to do is going to degrade because you're not allowing your nervous system to recover enough to keep hitting them at the rate that you're hitting them at the workload you're hitting them. And by that same token, if you were to try to do all of the repetition method, like let's say you've picked a bunch of exercises, you're going to do three sets of eight for the repetition method. If you were to try to do that four days a week instead of just two days a week with the max effort, what happens? You're going to have too much metabolic fatigue that accumulates, and what you're going to find is that your performance is going to be less. In other words, you're not going to be able to, over a week-to-week -week basis, hit the same weights for that 3 by 8 so what ends up happening is that it allows you to run more frequency. Uh, so that's one of the reasons you can get away with four extremely intense workouts with this sort of system if everything is programmed correctly is because you're rotating them. In other words, your max effort days for your squat are not back to back. They're spread out a week apart and you have a more volume approach usually in between. So what ends up happening is that your recovery for some of the energy systems and everything involved are slightly different and they don't affect each other negatively. In other words, the workouts feed each other. They don't um, require you to fully recover. In other words, you don't have to fully recover from the max effort squat in order to do the volume squat. And the metabolic fatigue can still be slightly accumulated from the volume work when you hit your next max effort without it negatively affecting it. So that lets you run a little more frequency combined with everything while still generating the highest workloads possible. So for people who are, are literally trying to train as much as their body can handle in terms of performance workout to workout and fit as much work as they can into a week and still tolerate it, it works great. Also, because of some of the variation and the shift in uh, even the movement patterns that can occur with the different rep ranges and some of the exercise variation that does occur with the way you do this, we can prevent injuries a little bit more in theory for more advanced lifters. So what you're looking at here with concurrent periodization is a system of maximizing your training work through the week. So in other words, uh, it tends to work best for people who want to go ahead and train like four days a week with maximum workloads, right? Because that's, that's a difference that people need to understand. It's one thing to train four days a week and have some lighter days in there. And it's another thing to come in and, and have literally max effort days to where you are putting, putting forward extremely heavy sessions and then high volume where you, you are absolutely pushing your metabolic fatigue to the limit and every single training session is one of those. That's a lot different than the way most people train, right? That's a lot different. Uh, at least once you start going to a four day a week training. Usually most people when they're doing four days a week, five days a week, they're doing silly ass bro splits and they're honestly not training that hard. Four straps with cable curls isn't hard training. Hitting a max squat is hard training. Doing a bunch of dynamic effort for the squat and the deadlift in the same session is hard training. You know where you're doing eight to ten sets of both or high volume on both exercises, squat, deadlift, and a good morning in the same workout, that's, that's, that's tough. That's what concurrent periodization is like. That, that's what you're doing with it. You are trying to maximize your weekly workload. So really, the people who benefit from this are going to be in-season uh, athletes, competitive athletes, people or people who are trying to absolutely maximize their total training work week to week. And when you do work in the same rep ranges, even with linear periodization, you can't do quite as much total training in terms of maybe reps, sets, weights, um, if you're doing everything the same through the week. And, and, you know, linear periodization works, linear progression works, but what we're talking about with concurrent training is that you are trying to maximize the amount of work you're doing uh, on a week to week basis. And that's the whole point because you're rotating through recovery uh, you're rotating through training styles throughout the week that do not require you to be recovered from the other one before you hit the next session. In other words, again, you are not recovered necessarily from your max effort squats by the time you're doing your repetition or your higher volume squats later in the week.
or deadlifts or, or bench press or, or overhead press or rows or whatever you're doing. So the whole point there is that you're not actually recovering. You don't have to be in order to maximize performance on the other rep range. You actually don't have to be. And what you would find is that if you actually mixed the rep ranges and tried to replicate the same work while mixing them together over the four days, you would actually get the same thing. You, you would probably find that oh, after a few weeks, you won't be able to replicate the same performance that you would if you split them up. So that's the difference that we're dealing with. So you're not necessarily ever mixing rep ranges in the same workouts, but what we are doing is you're mixing rep ranges and uh, intensity levels and volumes, staggering them throughout the week. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.